So the Masters in Mathematical Modeling is a, a one-year taught Masters, uh, which will train you in the techniques of applied mathematics with specific focus on developing mathematical models. And I hope to maybe give you some examples and explanations of what that might mean in the, in the next few slides. Very important is the formulation in terms of differential equations. So if you know your applied mathematics background, and I hope those of you interested in this course will have seen uh, differential equations and other applied mathematical techniques before, um, you'll know that differential equations are the way that we use to take models and take rules for how things change in time and to turn those into predictions for what will happen in the future. So I'll give you some examples of that too in a few moments. Uh, and very importantly, it, it, parts of modeling are both the development of models, so taking a real world problem and turning it into mathematical equations. But then of course we need to be able to solve those equations too. So the, the, the methods of solution, uh, which are, we tend to break into analytical methods, things that you can do with pencil and paper uh, and numerical methods where you need to do computer work are both very important parts of uh, masters in, in, um, in mathematical modeling that we'll be teaching you here. So I'm a course, a co-director of a group called MAXI, which is the research group within the mathematics and statistics department here at the University of Limerick. Um, we're one of the top groups in the country, perhaps the top applied mathematics group in the country. Uh, we've been very successful over the years in gathering competitive funding in, in writing papers. And our areas of expertise cover a wide range of mathematical and statistical techniques. Um, as I mentioned, differential equations, fluid mechanics, modeling under uncertainty, uh, my own area of complex networks and contagion modeling. And more and more recently, I focus on data analytics and data analysis, which is a very important part of our statistics group and links up with the mathematical modeling as well. We do mathematical modeling in the real world. That's a very important focus of both Maxi Group in general and, and of this master's in particular. Um, so it's not just applied mathematics to prove theorems or to know a little bit more about mathematics. We very much focus on applying and solving real world problems. So this slide just gives you some examples of the companies that we've worked with over the years um, because mathematical modeling deals with the, 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 the world where there are real world problems. And much of mathematical modeling is about taking a real problem, a problem that someone has in industry or someone has in, in the scientific realm and turning that into equations. That's, that's a non-trivial part of the step. Uh, it's something that you can know a lot about solving mathematical equations and still not know not anything about how to turn a real world problem into mathematics. So that first step is an important focus of, of our masters. Um, although of course you also have to learn the techniques for solving all the equations as well. And that's an important part. Uh, another important part, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about this in a second, is being able to explain the results uh, back to the stakeholders, back to the people, again, be they in industry or be they in science, who need to know what the results mean. So I'll talk a little bit about modeling of COVID-19 in a few minutes. I'm involved in the National Modeling Advisory Group that, that works with uh, NEFET, who's the National Public Health Emergency Team here in Ireland. So at the government level, we're giving advice on policy making. And a lot of that policy making or a lot of the advice we give is based on mathematical models um, of the type that I'll show you and which are based on the, the kinds of ideas that we develop here in this master's. So mathematical modeling is as a as an overall um, academic exercise, if you like, um, has multiple steps. It, it, as I said to you before, it um, there's the bit where you do the mathematics for a set of equations and get a solution. Um, but before that, it's important that we identify and specify the problem to be solved. So again, talk to someone in industry who may have a, a rather underdeveloped view of what exactly the problem is. They know they have a, a big pile of data. They know they have a specific problem on the production line, um, but they don't have a mathematical language to explain that. So the job of mathematical modeler is to help turn that problem into a mathematical one. So making some assumptions, define what the essential variables are, then take that perhaps a very simple model initially, do some mathematics, figure out what the solution of the equations that, that you've written down are. And then the very important step of comparing that back to the real world. So if, if you said something about how the production line should change, or you've said something about the number of infections that may happen in COVID-19, for example, we need to compare that back to what happens in the real world. And all models are imperfect. Uh, much of the skill in modeling is in develop, is understanding what assumptions are vital and what assumptions can be changed and why you would need to do that based on how well your model compares to reality. So modeling is really an iterative process. It's a process where we go around in a cycle. We continually improve the models, compare them, solve them, check them back with reality. 
And as the models get more complex, of course, it gets more complicated to solve the models <coughs> and to get comparisons with reality. But always in the end, the, the, the focus is on reporting back to the, the real world and connecting back to the real world. Um, so again, to, to industry or whoever has set the, the real world problem in the first instance. So an important part of modeling is that collaborative and um, communication part where you're able to talk to people who are not mathematicians and able to explain results that come out in mathematical language, translating it back to um, the language that, of the, the real world um, scenario. So I thought I'd give you a quick um, view of some of the things that we're doing on that um, national COVID-19 modeling group. Um, just to give a flavour for how all these things pull together in terms of a very obviously important and, and urgent real world problem. Um, the, the, the slide reference down the bottom is <coughs> to the, the uh, <coughs> technical notes that we've released on the Department of Health website. Excuse me. <coughs> so there's further detail there if you, if you, if you are uh, interested in these models. But essentially the model, um, one of the models that we're using for COVID-19 is um, what's called a compartmental model. So people who are infected with COVID-19 um, in the early days of their infection, they, they have the virus in them, but it's latent and they're not infectious for three to four days. Then there's a short period of one to two days during which people um, are not yet showing symptoms. So the point at which people show symptoms is this red line here. But before they show symptoms, people are infectious. Um, and this all this work is based on extensive literature reviews by a biological parameters team, also part of the modeling group. So they've looked at all the details in the emerging paper, uh, scientific papers on COVID-19 to understand the details of how the virus works. And one of our jobs is to turn that into a mathematical model, into a, a picture like this, and then into a set of equations to, to help predict what will happen in the future. So before people become symptomatic, they are for one or two days, they are still infectious and can infect other people. And then even when people show, some people show symptoms. So this group of, of compartments here include all the people who sh show symptoms. Um, they go to be tested or perhaps they self-isolate or perhaps they do neither of those two things. Um, and there's a significant cohort in, in COVID-19 who don't show symptoms but still are infectious. So that's what's called the asymptomatic infected people. So this is a, in mathematical language, this is called an SEIR model. Um, S stands for susceptible. The E stands for uh, exposed. I is the infected people and R the recovers. And how the uh, people move through these compartments is driven by differential equations. So this is a set of differential equations that describe the model I've shown you in pictures here. Um, rather complicated, there are a lot of parameters in here, but as I said, part of the mathematical process, modeling process has been working with our colleagues in biology to understand what those parameters are and what they mean in terms of the mathematical model. Turning those into equations, and then once we have equations, we can use that to compare with data from the past. So obviously working with our statistical colleagues is an important part of this modeling process as well. So these uh, data here show the daily confirmed new cases for COVID-19 from February 28th, first case in, in Ireland, um, up to just early last week. Uh, and you can see the, the, the trend of the cases went up and now thankfully has been coming down. And we've been working on what might happen in the future. So mathematical modeling allows us, first of all, to get a good fit of the equations to the data that we've seen so far. But more importantly, it allows us to think about what might happen in the future. So this was the date where, where lockdown was lifted um, uh, last Monday. So this was done a little bit before last Monday. And what we hope will happen is this, that the, the um, infections will continue to die out and, and decrease. But depending on how uh, mixing and social contacts happen, we could be in a case like this where we get a second peak. Um, and one of our jobs right now in the modeling committee is to watch the behavior of these these curves and these data points as they come in. Very noisy, as you can see, but but still um, fittable with with models like these to try and ascertain early enough which of these types of scenarios might happen in the future. So that's just an example, I guess, and, and I thought a very topical example of how mathematical modeling is used to solve um, some important real world problems. Uh, let's go back to the masters and talk about how you might learn the techniques to, to get involved in modeling like that. Um, the course is a taught master's program. That means it runs over 12 months. Uh, semester one starts in September. Uh, and in, in this uh, course, you'll take five modules in each semester. So um, here there are two core modules, advanced methods one and scientific computation. And they essentially respectively teach you about solving um, mathematical equations analytically and solving them numerically. So 
we need to make sure at the start of this program that you have the mathematical techniques that you need to be able to develop models and help solve those. And then in addition, you can choose three electives out of a fairly large set of choices here. And those choices include statistical modules, stochastic processes and statistical inference, for example, data analysis, or they include some financial maths modules if you're interested in financial mathematics or classic applied maths modules like fluid mechanics uh, and continuum mechanics as well. So there's a set of choices and when when you might arrive in UL in before we start semester one, as part of the induction day, we'll, we'll sit with people and explain what each of these modules is about and how that might fit into how you'd see this, this master's working for you in terms of where you want to go next. In semester two, there are three core modules, again, methods courses and then some applications courses, including ones around biology and, and uh, modeling of that type, and two electives, again, the, with the electives um, allowing you to go down a route of data or statistical analysis to do a classic uh, mathematical modeling or to look at financial mathematics, which are the, the three main areas, I guess, that we see people uh, falling into. That takes us to uh, about May of next year and then the, the entire summer uh, for the summer you work on a dissertation. So this is an important part of the program. It's 30 credits. That's one third of the program in full. So it's it's not a minor um, part of the program. It's 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 a fully incorporated part of it and it should be at research level. So you'd be supervised by um, someone who's doing research work and these these dissertations typically involve taking some um, contained part of that research work and working on it as part of your master's thesis. I'll show you some examples of, of recent uh, dissertation topics that people have been looking at. Um, it'll be, as you've seen, the main focus is application to real world problems. It'll include mathematical solution methods. It may include work with industry partners, for example, those real world problems may be motivated by work with our industry partners. Um, and it'll be finished by the end of August or very early September. So essentially the entire program runs for about 12 months. Just some examples of recent dissertations. Um, again, mathematical modeling, it's its a wide ranging topic because essentially what you're doing is learning to speak a language. The language of mathematics can be used to describe many different areas and, and applications, um, ranging, for example, from fluid mechanics at the climate and, and, um, and global level to the routing of packets on the internet, so motion through uh, to, to flow through networks, through um, financial mathematics, so valuation of exotic options is, is a question of uh, evalu evaluation of financial derivatives. The mathematics of imaging is looking at um, X-raying, uh, radar and other, other mathematical, other techniques that are used to construct images, um, either of, of bodies or of, um, of the uh, earth. Uh, and finally, as you've already seen, modeling of epidemics and uh, important topics like vaccination strategies, which I'm sure will still be on the agenda um, in this September. I'll finish just by giving you a quick view of the um, the employment sectors that our graduates go into. Um, graduates from this program have been very successful in employment. Um, essentially, employers understand that having done this course, we have that the graduates emerge with a strong ability to think to uh, apply mathematical and logical thinking to, to real world problems. Some graduates will go and, and not necessarily use advanced mathematical techniques, but they will be involved in jobs where they're using logical thinking and I suppose the ability to learn and to solve complicated problems, which is always something that's valued by employers across many sectors. We've had a strong um, set of a uh, strong um, link for our graduates with fintech in general, so um, financial services, uh, investment bank, evaluation of options, those are um, high value areas which have always taken uh, graduates from, from mathematics and mathematical modeling. In recent years, of course, data analytics has uh, been a huge growth area and very many of our graduates have gone in that direction. The manufacturing field, um, again, sometimes people are surprised, but there's a lot of uh, mathematical modeling, both on the engineering and on the data analysis side uh, and quality control in manufacturing. Similarly in software, the development of the ability to think logically through a problem and all the steps that are needed is a crucial part to, to developing um, good software. People going to research and development, um, that's something that companies who have R&D areas uh, in Ireland and elsewhere look for people with mathematical training traditionally, and that is still the case. And some of our people uh, very much enjoy teaching and the education aspect and have gone in that direction. Uh, finally, the, this master's is a very good route into PhD study, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, I'm also the director of the Science Foundation Ireland 
CRT, Centre for Research Training in Foundations of Data Science, which is a, a, a collaborative um, effort led by UL to train over 130 PhD students in the foundations of data science. Data science you've no doubt heard a lot about. People don't always appreciate that mathematical modeling and applied mathematics are one of the foundations of data science, along with statistics and machine learning. Uh, those three areas of math, statistics and machine learning are, are what we call the foundation aspects of data science. And we've gotten large funding and a large number of industry partners who are um, looking at PhD graduates over the next uh, three to four years. We've already taken in 20 PhD students uh, into UL and we're looking to take in more this year and next year um, in, the, in this area. And again, we're looking to this master's program as being one of the feeder uh, areas for that. So I'll finish with um, just giving, leaving you this slide, I guess, on the screen of how to apply. 